Okay, uh, we'll call the meeting to order, the October 11th regular council meeting. Um, approval of the agenda, is there any, anybody who has anything to add? It's moved and seconded. And before we vote, I have letters of, letters of support that I'm gonna bring up when we, you know, during decision as well. So I'll add those. Um, so it's been moved and uh, seconded. All, all uh, in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contraminded. Carried. Anybody has any conflict of interest to declare? If you if we get to an item and you, if you didn't declare, you can declare it then. So we have a presentation. We have Natalie Surrett d'Entremont, which is uh, have a presentation on active transportation. You're on. All right. Thank you for having me tonight. Uh, in front of you, you have a document that was uh, presented to the Active Transportation Committee on August uh, 2022. Uh, the Municipality of Argyle uh, has asked uh, WSP to make amend amendments to our 2016 Active Transportation Plan, and this is what I'm presenting to you tonight. Just so that we're all on the same page, and for people who are watching, what is active transportation? So active transportation is basically anything that human powered, <clears throat> human powered transportation. Most commonly we have walking, cycling, rollerblading, skateboarding, running, et cetera. So that's, it's basically kayaking, anything that is, doesn't have a power. It's motored by yourself, by a human. So uh, the, the municipality hired a WSP consultant to produce amendments to the existing 2016 AT transportation uh, plan. And it was to provide guidance on the priority projects over the next 10 years. And with a focus on pedestrian infrastructure. So examples, uh, a sidewalk. The project components, um, what the consultants were to do is first, what they did is took the 2016 looked at all the projects that were done, what was completed, what is ongoing, what is in progress, and what has not started yet. They also, at this point, looked at, there's some of the, the uh, projects in the 2016 that uh, we deleted because they no longer made any sense for us to keep them. Uh, the other component, component is the public engagements. So first we held a workshop. There was 10 uh, participants in that workshop. This was key stakeholders in our community, uh, people from the education, uh, public uh, health, uh, ed <clears throat> uh, and just people from the community as well. Um, and they took, we went over the uh, 2016 projects uh, and where we wanted to go from there. They held four public open houses, two at Drumlin and at the Drumlin School and two at the uh, Plymouth School. Um, the one in Drumlin was not very well attended. Uh, very few showed up. Uh, and the one in Plymouth, uh, they were held at two separate hours. So uh, Plymouth was very well attended and there was a letter of support that came from that community to support some of the infrastructure that they would like to see in that community. They also had online surveys. Um, there was uh, 121 online surveys were received and 45 paper copies were also received from that survey. So basically the public engagement uh, component of that, there was a pro approximately 200 people engaged in this process. Uh, and then the final thing is what I'm here to present to you tonight is the amendments to the active transportation plan. So they are, uh, split up in two different uh, categories. One's short term, so zero to five years, and the long term would be zero, uh, five, six to 10 year plan. Just to give you some examples of what uh, active transportation facilities are, uh, we talked about sidewalks, multi-use pathways. Uh, you see those in Yarmouth. Uh, it's just, they have a center line, and it's basically two directional traffic paves shoulders, so that is, there's no barrier between you and the, and the road, and then the painted 
bike lanes, which is we could have some of those in our areas where we have um, some uh, paved shoulders. So what I'm going to present to you next is the amendments to the Access Transportation Plan, so what actually WSP is recommending. And I'm going to do this high level uh, and I'll allow for questions afterwards. So the short term, as I mentioned, is five to zero to five years. And the first one is very much uh, an edu education awareness piece. It's uh, signage around pack it in, pack it out. So what you bring into the trails, you bring it out. So just basically that kind of, it could be signage, it could be policies, there's brochures, website, that kind of thing. The next one is install signage along the roads where designated as an on-road on, <clears throat> on road route with sign post. What that means is uh, Bicycle Nova Scotia has some signage where they would put, this is a bicycle route, like this is safe way, safe place to bike, um, as well as the share the road signage. I'm not sure if you're aware what that means, share the road is, doesn't mean that um, you put that everywhere. It is an education piece where uh, if there's not enough uh, shoulder to safely bike and have a car, uh, that's where you would put the share, your, share the road signage. And this is based on the existing, so incentivize Argyle business, uh, businesses to get certified by Bicycle Nova Scotia as a bike-friendly business. Uh, we have started some of this, but there's some communicate, there's some uh, pieces that we could uh, actually do better with this. Um, so we could offer some bike racks, uh, installations, there's deck holes, there's that kind of stuff. Again, uh, this is in the 2016, it's developing marketing materials to promote active transportation in the municipality. Uh, that would be, we have started some of those. We do have a biking and a walking. Uh, cycling brochures, but they're recommending that we do uh, a little bit, uh, spread our wings a little bit further, as that we go Yarmouth County, Shelburne County, and kind of work together with Bicycle Nova Scotia and have that kind of AT uh, presence, even a digital copy of uh, on the website, that kind of stuff, so. Uh, investigate the opportunity to have an all day posted speed limit of 50 kilometers within the school zone at of the Plymouth School. Very much uh, heard by WSP that, uh, especially in, at the Plymouth School, that cars are just zooming by. And doesn't matter what time of day, there is a, it's heavy traffic. And so we would have to be working with Nova Scotia Public Works to, to see uh, if we could get that done and why. Investigate the opportunity to reduce the speed the posted speed limit along the Argyle Sound Road and along the trunk three of Argyle Head Road to Argyle Sound Road. Uh, again, that is uh, that road has been determined by Bicycle Nova Scotia as being part of the Blue Route. And if you're not familiar with the Blue Route, that's the route that uh, Bicycle Nova Scotia wants to have a, a route around the province that would be identified as cycling and they call it the, the blue route. And the, this part here, this part of the road, is part of that blue route, and it is an 80 kilometer speed uh, zone. So again, it would be working with Nova Scotia Public Works. Uh, <clears throat> this again is uh, in our existing plan of 2016. It's to invest in new paddling infrastructure. And this is uh, kayaking and canoeing has been growing in our municipality and elsewhere. So it would mean to gather the paddling community together, um, prioritize what places we want to spend some money that would make sense for this uh, paddling infrastructure. Uh, and then it's the promotion of the paddling route. So um, basically they're maybe creating a brochure website around where are the nice paddling routes in our municipality? And we know that we have many, so um, that would be something that we could uh, investigate. We're still under the short term, so work with Nova Scotia Public Works on Highway 103, Argyle Interchange Project, that's exit 32, and 32A, that's um, 
Nikhil and Drumlin exit. Uh, there's a lot of talk. I have been in contact with Nova Scotia Public Works uh, operation manager uh, just to talk about if there's some if that was to happen in that area that they would have some place in that uh, design where there would be a sidewalk or a trail or some connection so that the school can can safely uh, evacuate. So it, it is a safety concern there. Conduct a pilot project to provide a complete sidewalk connection between Chemin de l'Église and uh, L'Église Paroissiale Catholique Saint-Pierre. So this is in Pamlico. Um, it is a pilot. There is a connection uh, to Minnick Hill, uh, La Chemin de l'Église. Am I I'm correct? Yes. yes. Uh, so what they want to do is pilot this project where they we wouldn't have to put um, something that we, that couldn't be removed just to see what the benefits would be if that would be used more, if that would be a safe route, so those type, and that's just the pilot, and just to document what's happening there. Still under the short term, create a functional plan for active transportation connecting the Route 334 between Plymouth School and the Newell Road, and that would be to um, develop a functional plan by a consultant to see what can what could actually happen there. Um, between <clears throat> the Plymouth School and the Newell Road. And again, the community engagement, um, WSP saw the need for this type of plan. Uh, and again, short term, create a plan for active transportation connection along Route 308 between Ecole Secondaire de Paramba and the ta Argyle Town Township Courthouse and Goal. And that um, has been identified through many avenues as being a safety concern. Uh, the students leaving for lunch, going to this part of our, our municipality, so crossing over the highway. Um, so just to come up with a functional plan by a consultant. And from the 2016 is to create a functional plan for the extension of the asphalt sidewalk and ending at Abbots Harbor Road to Echo Publico West. So same thing is happening around our schools. The safety of our students, uh, we have to take that into consideration. And uh, a lot of the uh, pedestrian infrastructure is based around the school areas, you'll see. Now we're turning to the long-term uh, projects, and this is six to 10 years. So what you're gonna see here is that what was presented in the short term, the functional plan, will now turn into a design plan, a detailed design plan, when we have secured uh, funds to go ahead and do that project. So the first one is the design, to prepare a detailed design for the asphalt sideway, sidewalk between Schmadi Leglis and Leglis Paroissial Catholic de Saint-Pierre. So basically, we hire a consultant for detailed design so that we're ready when there's funding's there. Again, this is the same thing. It's the a, a functional design, uh, sorry, a detailed design from Route 334 between Plymouth School and Newell Road, and it's the same process. Hire a consultant, we're ready, we secure fundings, we go for it. And this one is the one for uh, Ecole Panamba to um, our courthouse. And again, it would be a detailed design. What does, what does this entail? It's 100% design drawings, class A cost estimates. I'm learning a lot of new terms in this. So, um, but anyhow, it, it is shovel ready. We get the funding, we go for it. This one is the extension of the sidewalk from Echo, um, from the Pubnico uh, sidewalk in West to the Echo Pubnico West. Um, that's just uh, how do we how do we make that connection? Again, a detailed design by consultant. Uh, <clears throat> prepare a detailed design to provide more direct connection to the rail trail for the staff and, and students up at Drumlin Heights. 
and you all are familiar with Drummond Heights, the trail is directly behind their school. It, it is a matter of connecting them to that safely. It is a steep hill. So it's just that. And then again, it's a detailed design by consultants so that it actually would, it's something that would uphold uh, for a while. These are some of the ongoing projects that uh, we have in our active transportation projects. Uh, it's to continue building and installing new uh, furniture for the AT users. So we have some of the furniture on our trails and just to continue to do that. To host regular active transportation events, and we do that often. Um, resurface the rail to trail in East Pumnico, which is being done as we speak, uh, if it's not already finished. Resurface the rail to trail from Tusket to the Western Municipal Border. Uh, resurface the trail between Pubnico and Tusket. And basically what we're talking about is our rail to trail system, is that we need to resurface those. And that's gonna be an ongoing thing unless we decide to go with asphalt, asphalt which, I, which I don't think will happen. Um, place bicycle racks at important civic locations. And the document does outline the locations that um, would be um, some, some important places to have some bike racks. Uh, based on the existing, pave the shoulder along the road that were designated as either on-road route with paved shoulders or on-road on route with sidewalks and bike lanes, as well as the Argyle Sound Road. So it's, it's more of the signage um, that I talked about with uh, uh, Bicycle Nova Scotia. Now, this is in a nutshell what the plan is and the amendments to our plan. Um, and I'm sure as you're sitting around the table here as counselors, you're thinking um, these are a lot, there, there's a lot of money in this. Um, so how are we going to get our funding? Uh, WSP has identified multiple um, sources of funding, some of which we're quite familiar with some not so much, some that we already have tapped into, and some not. So if we look at the program, I'm just gonna go through the program, Active Transportation Fund um, that supports new builds, uh, expanding pathways, bike lanes, et cetera. Investing in Canada's public uh, transit uh, stream. Uh, it supports building expansion and upgrades of urban and rural transit networks. Uh, and including the creation of multi-use pathways in communities across the country. So that's, that's where we would fall under. Trail expansion grant uh, program. Uh, it's available to community groups, municipalities, not-for-profits to develop new trails, expand recreational trails, and, to, and, and do capital upgrades to existing trails. The trail maintenance program. Maintenance program. Um, this is to fund the trail groups who are involved on a regular basis with their maintenance of their trails. A trail engineer assistant grant. This is a fund that trail builders and managers uh, by providing them with funding for professional engineering ex uh, expertise. So that could, with those uh, detailed designs that would fall under that. The active communities fund. Um, this is one that we have tapped into in multiple years, up to $25,000 a year, uh, and it's 75% um, of the total project. So this is a good one to tap into. Oh. Connect2 is a pr uh, program that um, our neighboring municipalities have, have tapped into, uh, been able to get some funding to ex expand, develop their new trails. And the uh, Off-Highway Vehicle Infrastructure Fund uh, is supports maintenance of off off-highway vehicle accessible infrastructure. And some of these you may be more familiar with than I am, the Green Municipal Fund, Capital Project, Transportation Networks and Communication Options. And I don't know why there's an and there. Uh, and, then, oh, and then the Green Municipal Fund Study, Transportation Network and commute, Commuting Options. So those are, um, those that uh, just kind of like the pollution aspect, how just to show what tr uh, active transportation could do for that. And the trail funding program, it's a fund that supports trail operators across Canada to 
develop and enhance the Trans Canada Trail, and Trans Canada Trail system does not come as far as our area. So that is the end of my pres presentation. I will try to answer any questions if there are any. If not, uh, what I'm here to is so that council would, um, if there wishes to adopt this or approve this, this document. Councillor Sonia. Uh, th <coughs> Excuse me, thank you, Warden. Uh, great presentation, Natalie. Um, the funding part, I, uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, WSP had uh, funding in place for, I guess, short term would have been like five years to cover some of these non-motorized structures. Am I correct? To be honest, Ted, I, I'm not familiar with that. I had um, got that on a, on a Monday memo thing. And I think, remember I had talked to you, Scott, about that? And that uh, I think you had checked into it and it was a five-year thing. And they were, uh, they were financing a fairly large percentage if, if you qualified for that, for that funding. I find it a little strange that it's not included in here, unless it so is in, in That's here. Why I asked <laughs> unless it is included, and then I, I'm I'm not familiar with which one it is. Um, that's that's how I see it. I because I mean they were they're the one who put the document together. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Councillor Shred. Uh Yes. Good presentation, Natalie. A lot of work there, but uh, you gotta have a plan. I agree with that. A lot of projects. Uh, my 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 question my question is, uh, I don't see any of the smaller areas. Oh, let's say the uh, Harbors Point to Morris Island, maybe Quinnon to uh, to uh, Belleville, whatever. Some of these smaller areas. Is there a reason? Like, is it because the infrastructure is mostly in the Pubnicos and the Tuskets and or how did you, or there was nobody at, to, to, to present at the meetings? I mean, did you look at it? <laughs> There's a, and I think you have a few ideas of why. Uh, yeah. One of the things is there was no representation from those areas at the meetings. Uh, the other thing is the connection bet between the trails. Uh, a lot of it was the rails to trails um, talk. Uh, so I really, other than that, I, there's no, there's no reason why they couldn't have. Um, yeah. it was just, it's a matter of who's, who's really, who wants this. Yeah. So those are the people that showed up and, and actually gave their input. So that's how WSP cut this together. Okay. So if, uh, although some, if I, if I may, Mr. Warner, second question there, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, the, the, it's WSP that did all the inter, all the meetings and that stuff. Correct, correct. Okay, I, I thought it was you guys. Okay. No, no, uh, I did follow them, and yeah. I and our job as a municipality was to promote these yeah. and to make sure that people were aware to get the yeah. facilities, that kind of stuff. But the meetings themselves were run by WSP yeah. with my presence there. Yeah, you would have had some uh, some input into some of that those. Those things also your team. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, when I say myself, there is a team. There is an active transportation yeah. committee, which yes. consists of a counselor, of um, two school principals, one of the high school, one of the elementary, uh, some staff, uh, of course, our rec department, and a community member. Great job, thank you. Yeah. Yep. Councillor Board. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Matt. Um, the OHV off highway vehicle, a lot of, uh, people have been asking me like, you know, when you own a wheeler, or I guess you pay so much and it goes towards the trails. Yes. So how do you tap into that? Like, how does that work? I've been asked that, like, where does the money go exactly? Does it go to the whole province and then you, it's funds that I'm not sure. I'm just asking. A I can't answer that question. I'm not sure where yeah. that off vehicle highway uh, money is helped. Maybe RCAO can answer that question. He's looking at me as if he can. But. 
Maybe not. Did you want to answer? You can't. You don't know. I can. I can turn your mic on if you want. I have, uh, my answer is I have no idea where <laughs> that money goes, but but I can I can say that in Natalie's presentation, WSP did include that as a potential funding opportunity. So I presume that that's where some of that money comes from. But I honestly I have no more information than Natalie on that. Yeah, it's it's a question that that I've been asked, and I said, well, I'll find out, and. I can do some research into yeah. that, Kathy, and look at the the They're actual just grant. Um, I I don't know if I'll come up with much more than I know now, yeah. but I, just I can try. Mainly, you know how it works overall. That's right. All. Yeah. Thank okay. you. I have Councillor Sony again. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of a follow up question to Councillor Surrett's uh, question about, or your answer to Councilor Surrett on representation. You mentioned that uh, part of the reason that sidewalks are not mentioned he said, in his area was because of lack of presentation. So uh, if, if I'm correct here, I think uh, the Plymouth area had the most representation. Correct. So does that carry a lot of weight? I would say yes. Okay. I would say yes. That's where they're hearing there's, there's, hunger there to have this done people want that in the community if if our consultants don't hear that from the community then maybe that's not their priority so if you're not showing up and not engaged then you're we feel that they're happy with status quo but if there's an issue and there's safety we hear from the schools we heard from plymouth from the entire community you know the letters of support from coming from the community so those types of things will definitely, yeah, it does work more. Yeah, that's why it's it's in our plan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Councilor Albright. Thank you, Natalie, for the presentation. I think it's really important for us and for the Recreation Commission, those of us on that, we need to have a direction to follow and the amendments really do give us a focus. Otherwise, we're kind of wondering, you know, like Ted has questions, where do we go next? This definitely tells us where we have to go next. And for, for Councillor Surrett, the um, question you had around the smaller communities, a few years ago in Belleville, they did, we did do, we didn't, we had um, Hubert Pache volunteered and cleared out an area so that students could safely cross and go on the trail. So that's probably why that may not have come up because it is, it is used and it was a way for them to get to the trail. Otherwise they were, all the kids were walking on the side of the road to get to the trail because that's where my house is and I would see them and I was like nervous about it, but now they can just easily cross the road and get there. So, yep. Okay. We. Oui. Uh, I just want to remind council that each and every one of you uh, certainly has uh, your community and all of you want to improve your community. That's obvious. One of the things that WSP was asked to do was to pay particular attention to safety. Um, and so schools were high on that list. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can see that from the recommendations, right? You know, getting to Pubnico, getting to Drumlin, getting to uh, Plymouth, uh, Belleville, again, was not included for the reasons cited by Councillor, by Deputy Warden Albright. Um, there was another factor here that, that we wanted to measure, and it was the ability for us to obtain funding for it. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do was we had to find a scenario where these active transportation links closed the loop or created a pathway that, ex that could be extended. And if we could do that, then our chances of actually getting somebody else to pay for it went up. So if you don't see your community in there, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that your community is not in need of or may even get some form of infrastructure improvement. It's that these would be priority because of the safety and also because of the funding opportunity. So our opportunity to get funding for, let's say, you know, where I live, Shmedi Bulo, very low because where are you going, right? You know, the traffic is low and, um, you know, it's not connected to anything. Not to say that you don't, you can't connect, that you, that you have to connect in every case, but your chances, your score goes up 
if you're able to do that. So it really was to maximize our opportunity to fund these. Again, I just want to repeat, it doesn't mean that your communities won't see improvements, but what it does mean is that the active transportation plan will be the plan that we implement. Um, I think um, in response to the kinds of questions that councillors may have around their own community, perhaps what we owe you is a policy or a process upon which you could go down a road uh, to talk to your residents and to do all those things. Not to say that it would result in, in a success, but then there would at least be a process in place. Right now we don't have that. So there's not even a process in place. So it would be very difficult for anyone to get into an active transportation uh, improvement unless they were on this plan today. So I think perhaps we owe you more. Um, and that can be done, but this is like the first major step in that. Anybody else? Seeing no other questions, Natalie, thank you very much for your presentation. It was a great presentation. Uh, there was a lot of work put in there. I know I attended uh, the one in, in uh, at Drumlin, and like you said, I think there were very, very few people who attended there. But uh, um, definitely there's a need for some of the recommendations that are there, for sure. Now, it's on our agenda later on, and that's where we will bring it up for the approval or for not approval. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'll turn this on again. Okay, it takes us to our next, uh, the adoption of minutes. We have the September 27th Committee of the Whole Meeting minutes, and if there's in no, uh, no omissions or on the, uh, if you're okay with the minutes the way they're presented, we need a, a motion to approve. Moved by Councillor Boudreau, seconded by Councillor Dottermont. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. The next one is business arising, and there was a, a correspondence. We, we, we discussed correspondence to go, and this is to the Premier, and that has been done. The uh, letter was sent. And that's for the, uh, um, I, would just, I guess, disappointed I guess is, a good, is a good word to say about the announcement that was made. Uh, I guess whether it was an announcement or not, but it was there and uh, that, that there's a, a chance or there's a possibility of, of, uh, of cancelling the contract with the ferry. Now, whether that's in there or not, but we did send a letter and we sent it to every minister, or is it, yeah, just the ministers of every department in the, we, we, we copied it. So that has been done, that's, that's, that's done. We're at councillor's report. Who needs, who wants to start? If you have anything to report. I have Councillor Albright. Thank you, Warden. Um, many similar meetings to what was on your list. The Elemental Energy um, meeting that we had for the Wedgeport Wind Farm, the Audit Committee meeting we had. I went to a doctor recruitment meeting where we had a lot of conversation around. Uh, there's still some deficits. Of course, we know that in, in doctors in our area. It seems like whenever we make gains, we also take a few steps back, but they're continuing to work on on recruiting and retention as much as possible and thinking about having conversations with doctors and what's working, what do we need to work on, you know, getting more feedback from doctors as well to see what we can do to, to keep people here as well, not just recruit, but to retain. Um, we had a meeting for Mariner's Centre on the 5th of October and we talked about our upcoming budget and what we may need, where we're at. We had all put money kind of into a a seed pot, a, a, you know, for things that we would need. It's getting a little low. So there will soon be a request coming to council. We're finalizing that. Uh, we've also uh, agreed to, we passed a motion to hire a firm for governance to work on the governance piece, which is the next step for our steering committee. And they are currently recruiting for the fundraising chair, 
chairperson, the person who will take that role on. I just want to promote one thing before that's coming up is our Halloween on the Trail activity that's coming up for Argyle Recreation. I shared a poster today on Facebook um, that was put out, I think, by the rec department. Last year we did it for the first time. It's at the trail in Belleville, right across from Echo Belleville. It's at six o'clock. Um, kids came last year dressed up in their costumes. They walked the trail. We were all we were all in costumes and we gave out treats. And it was actually it was a really big success last year. So we're gonna try it again this year. So it is on October 26th, Wednesday, October 26th at six o'clock. And it's for Kids 12 and under, but I don't think anybody would really be refused. We don't ask for ID. <laughs> so, um, but we would like for people to call the rec department to register. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councilor Bork. Thank you. Um, pretty well similar, the same meetings. Um, department of Transportation, Elemental Energy, uh, attended the Western County Regional Library, the Audit Committee, and Nikhil. And the last time I gave a report, I had said we had a, a sign and a half in East Pumigo. Now we actually have two signs, one in Lower East and one in starting in its Pumigo head going to East Pumigo. So their boat signs are up on both ends. So it's very nice. Thank you to those who did put it up. It looks great. Um, I just want to mention that the community did get together. We have a little boy that is diagnosed with leukemia. The, com the, the community got in together um, and they've raised over $30,000 and we're ongoing fundraising. One more fundraiser this Saturday, it's called a rubber duck race. So that's gonna be something new to go look at. So that'll be Saturday on the 15th and anybody wants to come and watch, see the ducks flow through the, mm -hmm. the, the, the stream and that will be at the Hipson Bridge where, where the rubber duck stops. Are they all sold? So that's our, and you, they're all sold. You sold them In all. one week, we sold 500 ducks. So that's good. That's very that's good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor Stray. Uh, yes, I guess like everybody else, most of the meetings, I've Industrial Commission, uh, Mariner Center. The other, the other thing I'd like to add on is, uh, we are talking to Don Houston here a little, little while back. Uh, anyhow, so I called up for some potholes in the uh, Bula Road, and the next day they were there. Came and passed it the next day. Mm -hmm. Two days later, there's not a drop of hay left. It's all gone. Good. No, it's all gone. There's nothing. The holes are, are there again. Oh, it's gone. The that's holes that's are there gone. again. So by gone. cars, I don't know what they put on. They put, probably put some gum or dentine or something. But whatever they put on there, it certainly hasn't stayed. Two days gone. So whatever the popcorn, yeah. Whatever they put there. They, I mean, they put they put bail, yeah. but it's all gone two days. Yeah. So I guess I'll make another call. I've got the pictures and I'll shake them up again. Okay. At least they came within a day. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Bork, or no, Woodrow. <laughs> Bork just went. Um, <laughs> like, mo like most, uh, I attended all the meetings, Nikhil, transportation, uh, personnel meeting for Nikhil. Also attended a great presentation from two uh, wind project uh, companies that were, looks, looks bright. And uh, working with local residents uh, and the uh, Deputy uh, CAO Scott, uh, trying to get funding for bleachers uh, for the uh, ball field in Wedgeport. It's on school grounds, and the ones that are there now are pretty rotted out. So hopefully we'll be able to get some funding and get new bleachers. Also, like for the uh, uh, the uh, yearly uh, Coupe Maragua ball, ball tournament, family ball tournament. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, thanks. Okay. Councilor Dantramont. Thank you, Warden. Um, just want to report again on the uh, Yasta business. Uh, yesterday was the last uh, crossing for the CAT ferry. Uh, they were projecting somewhere around 40,000 passengers for the year. Uh, for the first year back after three, uh, it's, uh, you know, encouraging as far as I'm concerned. Uh, also, last week we had a few uh, cruise ships that came into Shelburne Harbor, which is... Uh, you know, in, in our uh, neighboring uh, county and municipalities. 
And some of the people who came off those ships actually ended up in our area, in the Yarmouth area. Uh, I'm pretty sure if uh, the, our tourism operators or, or uh, you know, uh, areas or, or museums were open in uh, in October that they probably would have got those businesses uh, that business too. But anyway, it's uh, it's always encouraging to see people come uh, from other countries, uh, you know, and in in the not so peak season, you know, in October. So hopefully uh, there'll be a few more next year. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Digby. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, I guess I've attended a lot of the meetings that a lot of the other councillors have attended. I'd just like to uh, extend a thank you to Jill and Todd Brannan. Um, on, they were going around on behalf of Love Atlantic. It was a, um, a program put on by a lot of churches across the Atlantic region and non-denominational by all means. And they were given out, uh, given out, uh, thank you cards and, and uh, stuff like that to people in the community. I uh, just getting back out of, off a wheeler ride and they were waiting for me in, in my yard and they had a, uh, a nice card presented me with a nice card, uh, some Tim Horton cards that I gave back for them to give to somebody else. Uh, but what I found quite ironic, they presented me with a nice chocolate cake. I don't know. I don't look to be, losing weight by no means and i'll guarantee you the chocolate that cake was very good it did not go to waste so but it was all very good and i thank them very much for what they've done i thank all of them that worked on this project on behalf of love atlantic uh, all across the atlantic region and that for what they've done mm -hmm. brings a smile to a person's face sure thank you okay councillor sonia oh uh, thank you i'm last because uh pretty quiet in my district too here I attended, you know, a lot of the meetings that some people see here said. But I, I guess the only thing I have to say is a lot of buzz about the windmills in my community and with the different uh, uh, presentations as we've seen. Other than that, again, pretty quiet. So, okay, thank you. Okay, the next is the warden's report. It's attached. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I listed the. Uh, activities for the month of September. Um, next one is staff report. And that would be Deputy Warden, Deputy uh, uh, CAO. I'm moving up, Deputy <laughs> we just Warden. We just, promoted, <laughs> we just promoted you. I like you, I like you, I like you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll summarize the the eight pages here that was for the staff report, and we'll start with the uh, CAO's office. So the boundary review um, from the last meeting, you guys gave uh, directions with a motion to go with the seven and nine counselor option. Uh, so what we've prepared as staff is we prepared an online survey, and uh, we've done some video clips and some brief history on the website. So it's all there on the website now available for people to see. Um, as you know, we've uh, the last time we did open house, it didn't work out as, as good as we wanted to. We didn't get to participate and we wanted to. So now we're kind of doing the reverse. We're meeting groups, and we started today and met with one seniors group in the, in Argyle, the new the Argyle New Horizon group. Uh, so where I met with a bunch of, uh, of seniors that were there uh, and kind of did the presentation that our CAO made to, to you at, at the council. Um, to get their feedback. So I had the surveys already or I gave them a card if they wanted to uh, do the survey online, what, whichever uh, served them best. So we're going to continue to do that. Myself, the CAO, and with uh, Chantal, uh, meet with different groups in our community for the next month or so. Uh, so it'll be another way of, of connecting with our constituents here. So. Um, We'll also do like the open house uh, tentatively planned for November 15th here. Uh, that will be a hybrid model also that we will be doing here. So we'll still be doing an open house um, just because you kind of need to do that to satisfy UARB. But so. um, strategic planning, uh, we, we've done, um, as you were part of it, we've done it last year. It kind of got put on the shelf, but uh, the CAO has kind of, uh, 
uh, brought it back out, met with the leadership. We're kind of tweaking it, just looking at it, making some amendments to make sure that it, it meets our needs. Uh, hoping to have something soon to present to, to council. Manor Center partnership is ongoing. The CAO actually had a meeting today. No, it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, the ADA and the agriculture, uh, there is an open house plan for the 19th at the Glenwood Hall. Uh, this is all being finalized and worked with, with WSP. Uh, at this open house, there'll be some provincial representatives at this meeting to listen to the concerns of the residents that will be there. Uh, just a big shout out to Alex, Alex, who has done an amazing work here to get the stakeholders engaged in getting this all organized. Uh, so thanks, Alex. Uh, CAA, do you ADA. Have ADA? Um, yes, uh, I think it's one to three, Glenwood Hall, six to eight. Tuscan, both on October 19th. Thank you, CAO. October 19th? October. October. Are there cars out there that... There are. There are, yeah. Just, I don't have one. Sorry about that. We'll, we can share that information. Um, from my office, uh, the Veterans Banner Project is still ongoing. I actually got my first shipment of banners, so we're hoping to look at putting those out in the Westport Tuscan area this week. And uh, we'll look at the West Pumnico, East Pumnico the following week, but I'm still waiting for that order. Um, East Pumnico trail project is uh, almost completed. We are just waiting for the compact compacting of the trail to be, to be done. And I think it's when that the, our contractor needs to wait for another contractor to come in to actually do that work. So we're kind of waiting for that to, to happen. Um, in the finance department, uh, Marcia and her group are working hard. Tax reminders were sent out in September. Uh, they're working on tax sales, so things are always working and busy in that department. Uh, in the courthouse and archives, uh, we had spate closing the museum and gift shop uh, on October 28th. Um, so that's coming to a close. We are um, working on uh, the window retrofit project and the, the uh, contractor is supposed to come and visit uh, soon. We're hoping this month to kind of take out a window or two to kind of look at uh, the work that needs to be done uh, and prepare for to do the rest of the windows for the rest of the winter. And recreation department, uh, they received some, some funding here through different, different initiatives. Um, they're also planning to plan the, uh, the uh, Argyle and Yarmouth Recreation Department working together to do the Yarmouth County Athletic Banquet again that kind of been put on the back burner for the past few years with COVID. Um, even though Fiona didn't hit us directly, uh, it did uh, shut power off in a few areas and uh, we were able to use our generators for the first time in the Tusket uh, sewer plant and it worked out very well and I think even in Pubnico. So, uh, all the hard work that those folks are doing behind the scenes to making sure that the our generators are up and running and checking and all those things are, are working because they, they work fine during this outage. So uh, kudos to them and the, the great work that they do in that department. Um, the dir Director of Protection Services continues to be busy. Uh, as you can see, he's, he's uh, issued 38 permits in the last month or so. I think that brings me to my end. Uh, okay. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Digden. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the great report. Just wondering when you're going out uh, meeting with uh, with groups in the communities and that and um, in councillor areas, if the councillors could be invited to these meetings. And the only reason I say is uh, I know after the meeting, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to approach me and say, well, here's what I heard. And if I'm not there to actually hear what they heard or what they didn't hear, I don't know what to tell them. To That's a great point. I, I appreciate you bringing that up, uh, Councillor, and I'll definitely take that into consideration. And then we can definitely invite the councillors to these meetings. I think you guys should be there, to be honest with you. Honestly, because, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the only other thing I will say is, Thank you for the permit reports that was in, in there this week, this time. Thank you. Councillor Slonyan. 
Uh, thank you, Warden. <clears throat> uh, the uh, windmill application or turbine applications here, it wasn't, uh, you, you didn't mention it. However, uh, there's a possibility of having windmills in Wedgeport, in Quinnan, and in Lower Argyle in Pomnico area and the Crown Land, correct? Correct. So uh, Argyle can be pretty, pretty heavy into wind turbines. So my question is, uh, might be a double question. What the protection given to the land owners, the citizens of Argyle, is that one kilometer buffer zone, correct? Correct. Is there anything else? I'm going to pass it on to the CAO who might have a little more uh, on this one. Which I will, I'll, I'll probably have a follow up question after. Okay, you well, you may or may not have asked the right person. Um, there are additional um, controls associated with wind turbines. Uh, um, first, they all, uh, not every zone can have one. So your mixed use zones of Pubnico, Tusket, and Wedgeport proper, I'm talking about Wedgeport, I'm not talking about uh, the outskirts of Wedgeport, or nor am I talking about the outskirts of, of Pubnico. I'm talking about them proper, that you cannot put a turbine there. Well, you couldn't anyway, because you would hit a thousand, you would hit a thousand meters in every case. But they are disallowed in those zones. So they are uh, allowed only in coastal community or out, outer zones is what I would call. The uh, the other uh, rule is that they require development agreement with with the municipality. Um, there are probably other, um, um, well, hang on, before I go on, the development agreement has to specify how the developer is going to address certain nuisances that come from that development. So those nuisances are listed, all nuisances of substance are listed in the MGA. So that's not actually our rule. That's like a rule for everyone. Uh, things like noise, um, uh, beautification, um, you know, any sort of like harmful, noxious fumes, et cetera. Many of those things are listed and they have, the, the developer has the obligation to tell us how they're going to at least try to reduce some of those nuisances. Um, and there are other minor rules around how close the wind turbine must be from a property line, for instance. Uh, there are other, uh, perhaps more technical rules that I couldn't answer uh, today directly, but could probably list every single rule and regulation associated with that. I will say that there is work being done currently to further define what a residence actually means. So uh, you live in your home, and, and it's pretty clear to me and you that it's a residential home. Uh, however, uh, we may have a cottage um, that we go at uh, three days a year uh, to to you know to to catch the one deer we think we might get, uh, or to to kill the deer that we might get. I don't think you catch deer too often, but you can try. But anyway, uh, so the, my point is is that that to me is a much different scenario than would be a, a full time residential home. So we are currently looking into those rules, and those rules will be brought to the PAC um, when they become uh, when they hatch. I guess. So so. Um by nature, uh, these turbines are situated in a sparsely uh, populated areas. And by nature, these populated areas have a limited voice because there's a limited amount of people. So uh, the questions that, that I've had in the past was, of course, the noise and that that one kilometer buffer zone seems to work for most, not for all. Um, uh, the thought of hunting and being restricted, one of the answers I got was, well, whatever the landowner uh, does with his land, it's up to him. Is, is that, does that hold water? Will the, the, the company that leases this land have control over the land enough to restrict the hunter? I'll, I'll go on and also say that one of the major issues was if a bearing fails, and becomes noisy, uh, it should be shut down immediately until repair, is what, what one person said. And I kind of agree with that. 
that maybe there should be policies set. I mean, if we're going to have these, it's possible we could have all these turbines within the community of Argali. It'd be great for revenue, but it's also uh, going to have its own problems. Uh, Nicole will have to deal with that in Quinnin, and a uh, gentleman on my right and left here will have to deal with it in Pomnikov. So I think if there's any uh, maybe amended policies to be done, I think it's worth the thought, is what I'm saying, I, I before did, it comes to pass. I did hear that they're agreed, and I did hear that there are certain questions embedded in what you said, and one of them has to do with the bearings of the wind turbine. In the development agreement, for instance, the municipality, first of all, the municipality has very little control imposed over a developer and that's for good reason because the developer is supposed to be able to develop in Canada supposed to be developed with some level of freedom however it is not entirely free so what they have to do is they would in my mind would have to prove or show to the municipality that when these things occur that they have a certain period of time where they have to address it or they have to turn it down off or whatever um, I, I am aware of that situation that you speak um, and there was there were two or three instances where that happened, where it wasn't noisy, and then suddenly it was extremely noisy and 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 a big nuisance and annoyance to the resident. So, in those developments themselves, they would not have required a development agreement at that time. They would now. So, if that would have been developed, you know, that today, um, they would have had to have insist on that control and insist upon it with us. So they wouldn't just be accountable to the resident they'd be accountable to council. And council, um, as much as people may um, not believe this, council's development agreement is very powerful. And you have the ability to, to act um, to counter that kind of, those kinds of uh, nuisances if they're not being properly managed by the developer. That is not a power you would have had before. So with each time that something happens, it seems like we've improved our land use bylaw somewhat. Um, but I would, I would ask all of council because we don't know where these developments are going to happen. Uh, I'd ask all of council to pay attention to some of the PAC amendments that might come through. Some of you are PAC members. And as councillors, you have to approve any sort of amendment that the PAC would bring to you. So it would be important to keep a good eye on that because it will have an impact not only on, it, it, it could impact three districts or four uh, in the end if, we're, if, if that's successful. So I think... I, I hope I answered all your questions, and I think that any kind of input you might have from the resident on this would be important to bring to our attention offline as well, so that we could bring that to our planners. Because if there's something that needs to be com coming up before a development happens, we ought to address it earlier. Because once they develop, once they put in the permit, they're grandfathered at the rules at that time. So, um, so anything that comes up, please, um, you know, bring that to our attention, uh, call a meeting, bring us in, and we can bring the planners in as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Dachema. Thank you, Warden. Uh, on that same subject, when it comes to Crown land, uh, what, I guess, juris jurisdiction does the municipality have when it comes to Crown land? Is it the same as privately owned land? Uh, I assume, and I could be wrong, that we don't collect taxes on Crown land. Uh, so if there was development on Crown land, would we collect taxes or not? Um, an excellent question. So um, the answer is we would collect tax on the wind turbine generating trend generated. The tax law in Nova Scotia was actually influenced very much by the municipality of Argyle back in 2004. Um, we own the first wind farm, and so we had a big issue around how does these monstrosities get taxed. And um, we landed on uh, legislation. So they're taxed based on their ability to generate power. So if you have a three megawatt um, uh, uh, turbine, it will be taxed at a higher number than a two megawatt turbine. And it's your nameplate or maximum capacity on the turbine that gets taxed. So it doesn't matter if it generated that, that it can generate that, that's what you're taxed on. Your question on whether or not it being on Crown land that you would be able to collect taxes, um, the answer is unlikely on the land itself. 
Uh, there may be equipment and other things that they would have to add on to that property for lease. Those are very common. We see a lot of like cottages that are on crown land that the crown land isn't actually taxed, but that the, the cottage is taxed. So any sort of amenities that get added would likely find a way to be taxed with the exception of things like maybe land improvements. Uh, we do get a grant in lieu of taxes from the province. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain whether that would be affected. I guess the conservative small C in me would say that it wouldn't. So don't bank on that. Uh, if it comes, it would be a, a bonus. Thank you. Contradict him. Uh, thank you. I, I just feel as though I should bring this up. Um, I guess on behalf of the operators that operate the wind turbines in West Pubnico or North West Pubnico, um, I know that they, I'll just write down some of the stuff that you were saying. Um, they try to be great neighbors to everyone around them. Uh, they keep their properties and anything around the turbines very nice. Um, as far as hunting, I have no idea what kind of agreements you people or they would have other places, another company, but I do know for a fact that uh, some of the people that were hunting when these turbines were put up and operational, they even went as far as giving some of the hunters keys to get in and that to, on their roads and that helped them out. And um, yeah, that's all I can tell you. But I know the ones down home, you know, they're doing a great job as running their turbines and being neighborly and then put in the community. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you for the report. We have, we moving on to for decision. And the first item is the active transportation plan that we just uh, had uh, the presentation on. And I guess what we're looking for is more discussion on it or a motion to approve the plan as presented. No, second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions. Question called. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contraminded. Carried. Next one is cybersecurity. Um, at our last uh, uh, audit committee meeting, uh, it was uh, brought to our attention by the auditors of the uh, cyber attack risks for, for, the, for the systems. And they recommended that an audit of our, uh, of our uh, uh, current IT uh, uh, controls, we, we should have that audited and recommended some insurance as well against that type of, of, uh, of uh, attacks or whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to turn that to CAO. I'm pretty sure that he has more to, to add to this. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Just very quickly, uh, cybersecurity, I think all of you may have heard or been scared um, by some of the comments that would come. <laughs> you may have seen heard it at a recent NSFM conference or any such meetings. AMA, I know, has raised this quite a few times. This is not new to us. I will say that our IT staff person um, has a lot of controls in place already. So it's not that we're, that, you know, that we're, you know, you know, flapping uh, uncontrollably um, against the, the threats that are out there. Uh, many of our servers are actually housed off-site, and many of our uh, access points are easily rectified. So if you were to be attacked and say uh, by a ransom um, company or ransomware and says, I'm going to keep your information um, hostage until you pay me X, Y, that is what ransomware is. Um, we have the ability to say, that sounds good. Thank you very much. We're just going to restore it. Goodbye. So we do have certain controls in place. However, we don't know what we don't know. And many of the ways that um, fraudsters can come into your system is actually, you know, sometimes through the oddest window. Um, so it's sometimes it's an email where you, you click it and suddenly you're into uh, 
uh, Alice in Wonderland. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're into a whole other thing where you think it was completely legit. Sometimes your own emails are used against you. Um, so I'm getting a request from Glenn Digden says, call me right away, click here. And uh, if I'm not careful, I click here. <laughs> And, uh, and Glenn, Glenn has no idea what just happened because he was not the author of that email. So all that to be said is that uh, we have not budgeted uh, Grant Thornton or any auditor to come in and do an audit. They audit our controls every year. They just don't audit our IT controls. And I think we're well overdue. Um, <laughs> so I would like to propose that we invest in this. The problem, of course, is that we didn't budget for it. So we have to find, um, within, find surplus from within, which we we do have, in our opinion, in my opinion, we do. Uh, thus far, those thing, things can change, but thus far we are in a position where we can afford that with current operations. We have to go into reserves to go get it, and it would be uh, it would be to do the audit component. Now, the audit component can be two or three steps. We can talk with the auditors and see how much we would do. Um, it would be important to to hire Grant Thornton, in my opinion, because they already do our IT our uh, accounting controls. So. It's at a size where we can we can sole source under the procurement acts. So we're not we're not actually breaking any purchasing laws by hiring them to extend their service. Um, and I would just say that the insurance component is expensive, but it's largely reduced in cost once you complete the audit. So you present that to the insurance company and they reduce their premium based on the work that you've done so far. So that's what we're asking council to approve. Um, I say up to ten thousand because. Um, um, anything, uh, anything above that, I think I, it would be appropriate for me to come back and say, listen, we thought it would be 10 and it's 15. I don't think that we don't want you to give us that permission. We want to, we want a limited, um, amount so that we can deal with that. So that's really the presentation and the request. Contradicting. Oh, thank you. And, and it's, it's hard to believe that's the dark part of the cyber world that we live in. And when he was mentioning about, you know, this is Glenn Dignan, uh, can you get back to me? We've already had emails and that, you know, we've had a couple from our warden. And, yeah. you know, I didn't know 11 o'clock at night. And I thought, holy jump, what's going on? And that, mm -hmm. But no, it's out there. It's real. And I would be willing to make that motion to spend up to $10,000. Second that. Okay. okay. Moved and seconded. Councillor uh, Surrey. Uh, so the IT... Uh, Grant Thornton has an IT division in, in, in right in your lobby, darn, I wasn't. I thought they just did the paper audit and that, that stuff, yeah. They do that side of it, but that's good. Yeah. They do it out of Halifax. So oh, they, okay. they have it central. So they don't actually provide it through Yarmouth, but through Yarmouth you can obtain of that course. service. That's it. Great, thank you. And I would want to just make something abundantly clear. This, is, this, this audit is not uh, an audit based on... Uh, the inadequacies of our current system or our current staff app applying the system. This is not what this is about at all. This is actually in protection of. It's the opposite. So this is what we would say in accounting controls. We say, look, these controls are for to protect you. And so this is to protect our IT person and to protect our IT integrity uh, towards attack. So I, I don't want to send the wrong message there. Oh, uh, thank you. And sorry, I didn't, uh, for anybody that may be watching from home or whatever, uh, I did not say the whole motion and that which I normally do, but move that the CAO be authorized to spend up to $10,000 exceeding our current approved budget to engage Grant Thornton to lead an IT audit of our municipality for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Okay. Any more other questions? None. I'll call for the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, carry. Uh, next one is the organizational chart. And I think uh, that should go to probably CAO again. And if you want to turn your mic. Thank you, Mr. Warden. One of the de one of the things that uh, the deputy CAO committed to you, which I'm speaking on now, is an ongoing review of our org chart. So we said, here's the org chart. We made some significant changes, particularly in my absence, um, to kind of like respond to some of the needs that that we 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 felt that we needed to 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 put in place. 
Um, many of those changes are working extraordinarily well. Um, uh, in particular, what I find is many of the council related questions will flow first to the deputy CAO. And I'll tell you why that's important to me. Number one is, is it's a great experience for the deputy CAO because it may be the first time he's looking that, at that. It may have been my 18th time. Uh, secondly, you get a different voice uh, that may answer a question for you, uh, which is not a bad thing. So we're, we're really expanding uh, your knowledge, hopefully, and the knowledge of our staff. So that's working very well. Um, as long as it's an informational thing, um, our deputy CEO is more than happy and committed to helping you as much as possible. So that part works very well. And, and I don't just mean uh, him in particular. I mean that you're asking questions of different departments now more than ever. And I think that means it's working because that's what we want. We want you to be comfortable asking questions to the department heads when you have a question. This is, this is your municipality to govern, right? So this, so this is a really good sign that it's working quite well. Now, what we what isn't working as well as we'd like to see is a particular position. So we had a full time position go to part time, and I'm going to keep the names out of it because that's that's I don't want to get into the in camera. I want to get into the public uh, public discussion. So we had a position there that was full time. That person was promoted or moved into a different position, and then we decided to try that position, the the old position, part time. Um, we've had a, a struggle with um, understanding the role and responsibility of that position. So um, we received notice um, about two and a half weeks ago that, that the person would not continue. Uh, we only really went to probably October or November anyway before we were going to review that position. Uh, but, but we had been reviewing it quite a bit throughout. And what we, what we noted was, was two things. Uh, one was what uh, one of our esteemed staff members said that this would be the 11th person that was hired in that position since that person started in 2000 and I want to say 10. That's a lot of people in that period of time. So that is extraordinarily unfair to that person. Uh, they're clearly not being fulfilled in that position. And if they are, they're moving on to, they're, they're being promoted or moved into other positions because they're that good, or they're just not adjusting or not liking the position and then they move on. So we don't we didn't we never had that position right, and when I'm the position I'm referring to is the assistant to the director. Okay, we used to call it the assistant to the director of public works. Uh, that got shifted somewhat to assistant to the operations and the property inspection departments, um, and I use those terms loosely. Those are not the official words names. So um, so and then the other so that was one we we didn't have a fulfilling. It, it was clear to us that we didn't have a meaningful. Uh, position there for that person. Many things have changed since. Uh, different people have been become directors and are accustomed to doing things differently. There is a much lower uh, dependency on that position to like do correspondence and do some of the other traditional assistance roles that that used to be there. Now those roles are shifted. They are some of them are accounting based. Some of them are supporting garbage collection, advertising. So. The, so it's it's a different role. The role is changing. The second piece that we noticed was, uh, and we and we have been politely reminded of this many times from our auditors, and I hate to bring them up more than once, you know, uh, but it's the fact that we don't have a solid handle on internal controls in our finance department. And some of the reason is because we are not appropriately staffed is how they would describe it. Okay, I'm not, those aren't my words. Uh, they'll, they would say it would take three to four people probably to effectively staff, but we're not going to do that. And they know we're not going to do that. But what we've noticed was with this position, we could change it such that it becomes a, an accounting position focused on operations and, and property inspection rather than an operations and public ins and, and building inspection position focus primarily on that and secondly on accounting. So what we've learned, and some of this is in the new building, is that people come in and they're asking for services. Many times Bonnie is the person that would serve them because it's an accounting question, it's a taxation question. So we saw the, the, the requirement for, for more, um, uh, more of an accounting mindset at the front desk. And that the second mindset, which was inspection and, and operations, could be sought through
true learning. But the primary teaching would have to be tax collection and other similar uh, services. What am I saying? So what I'm saying is that that position used to be long uh, full-time. We went to part-time. That didn't work well. What we're suggesting now, and this is why we're bringing it to you, is a classification change. And the classification change would be to move that position to an accounting clerk position. And so they would be primarily responsible for tax collection and uh, at least one section of the payables, perhaps the entry of that, those payables, so that the person who pays the bills would be separated and there would be in additional internal controls uh, put in place that protect the municipality. Uh, we also have to realize that our finance uh, clerk and our tax collector slash revenue administrator, both of which are, um, I won't say approaching retirement, because they perhaps they are not, but they are closer than you think. Um, and I'm saying that respectfully, that they are senior staff. And so if we don't seek to share that learning, uh, we might lose something rather important for the organization. So this is the background as to why we're asking you to look into this and, and to, to help us by approving the classification change. If you look at the org chart that's attached, what you will find is, as I open it, um, you will find that the, the that it has changed very little with the exception of under the director of finance, which is in the gray. You will see accounting clerk ADM. That's the position I'm referring to. That position <laughs> used, used to be under the, under the blue. So we're moving it. Uh, the responsibility for that position would shift to the director of finance. However, they would uh, provide services to protection services and operations, and we would work out the details because there are certain things that that position really should continue to do. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is protect our executive assistant that works for the deputy clerk uh, to make sure that that, that person's tasks remain in, in that area rather than be brought into other things that the part-timer uh, was was learning to do. So that's a long description of the situation. I did talk quickly about costs. Uh, that position, as approved, cost about you know it could cost up to twenty six thousand dollars a year. Um, it it would not be double that, it, but it would be more. Um, it would it really would depend on negotiations and where that would land on the salary scale. But in the low forties would not be unreasonable. The 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 other uh, factor here would be. You'd only really be approving it until the next budget line, the budget time, and in that budget time, you'll be approving everything. It would it would just be that 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 salary would be embedded in the uh, budget of 2023-24. So what we're asking you to do is approve the classification. Understand that the difference in cost, um, you might see that for six months, um, as that as if the position is recruited, maybe less and that we would have to build that position into 23-24 um, budget. I would just end with one last reminder of council that um, we have shifted, we have not actually added staff, uh, which seems unusual when I only tell you that little section, but in fact, that used to be a full-time position. We're, we're bringing it back to a full-time position, so we had actually cut back and, knew, and realized that was a mistake. And we shifted the community development to the development officer position. So we would not be filling that position. We would be favoring the development officer position. So when you look at the whole picture, we haven't actually added any staff. We just uh, shifted our focuses. So that's my lengthy description. I'm open to any questions that you might have. Councillor Sonia. Uh, thank you. Mine's not a, I, yeah, it is a question. Could, could Can council, can I have names with these operational heads on this chart? You sure could. Okay. We will provide that to all council um, and, and you'll be provided with this uh, via email or paper copy um, with the names, just not here. It will be right. put in your inbox or whatever, you'll yes. have it. Perfect, thank yeah. you. That's the good question. Councilor Spratt. Uh, the, the, uh, the money's not budgeted for, so therefore, it, where is the money gonna come from? 
So that's a good question. So again, the we the the difference. What I'm suspecting is, first of all, we've had we're going to have a gap in that position. So where we budgeted perhaps up to twenty six thousand dollars a year, there's a section of that that will not be spent because it will be vacant. Then there'll be the uh, so it's vacant now, right? Yeah. So then there'll be a time frame where we where we hire, and then only at that point will that cost increase. So my best prediction would be, you know, maybe early December, uh, if we're lucky. So then you've got December, January, February, March at that at that increased amount. So we're expecting that that amount not be considerably high, though you are correct. It would uh, put the line item for that salary above its budgeted uh, amount. However, um, we think that with what's happening and the trends that are happening in each department, again, it will be absorbed by the current operations. Our deed transfer taxes are still showing very, very strong. Hate to say it a million times, uh, but there are other savings that we have in costs that will more than offset this investment. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what that is because it will depend on when we recruit them. But if you can follow, you know, there'll be a vacancy and then the hire and only be for probably four or five months. Makes sense. Thank you. Councillor Digdin. Uh, thank you. And this is just more for information for myself. Uh, how many full-time staff now are employed for, in the municipality of Argyle? There are, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that by, tw I believe it's 21, or actually 20. Um, which this would make it 21 because that was a part-time position. Um, that includes uh, the staff that's paid for by the West Pubnico uh, Sewer Committee. So there are two positions that would fall under that budget. Uh, they are still an employee of the municipality. But they're just not paid for by the regular rate. They're paid for by a special rate. So then that would, if you take those out of the equation, um, that would be 19. Um, I believe that's accurate, uh, though when I double check the numbers it might be 20 and it might be 18 but that is approximately what it what it is yeah for the size of the municipality it's sure not over staff sir uh, I would have been checking other uh, municipalities I appreciate what you've done um, and you are correct every municipality is staffed differently mm -hmm. so we for instance have a deputy CAO many rules don't have that position though they're getting them um, and uh, what we're finding is there's a lot of downloading. So, um, so with all of the complexity that's happening with building inspection, you best be ready, right? So that's one of the things that we're looking to invest in. Um, if you look at some of our neighbors, uh, you know, the finance department is two or three less than what they would have. Um, I think that our operations has only now reached a point where we're effectively staffed. Um, we we were investing in a lot of overtime and taking a risk, quite frankly, with some of our staff in operations that were working day and night. So that so I give full credit to the team to bring that to, to bear and and the leader there, which is Kyle, who has insisted that you know this is has this this is the way it is. Um, and each department is now taking its turn. Uh, I think we worked on protective services, as you know. And we put in that second person, and I think now what we're saying, what we're seeing, is finance is understaffed, and so this could be a way to deal with the three or four short that the auditors say. This could be a way for us to do that rather efficiently, and um, so I, I appreciate you doing the research. Um, it's hard for us; it feels like we're justifying our own existence. <laughs> so we appreciate no. the fact that you did your own research on that. You're thank no. you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I, I, just just for clarification for me. So at this motion doesn't hire someone at this point. This just reclassifies a position. Is that correct? Does, does that mean that, that our accounting clerk, we have an accounting clerk now, right? It, we have a finance clerk. Oh, we don't so, have an accounting clerk. Okay, no, there's no accounting we clerk. We do not have an accounting clerk. So what would happen is the position of assistant to the director would be eliminated okay. at part time and would be replaced with this new uh, classification called accounting clerk, which is a new position. Okay, it is. It will have new responsibilities. Okay. Um, so your motion, you're correct, would be to approve the classification, the hiring and the budgeting and all we'll that. Come later. Remind, 
remains with with, with myself with to you. manage exactly. on your behalf. Exactly. But it's a new okay. position and requires your approval for that. Okay. Good. N- knowing that there is a budget implication to that yes. decision. Yes. Right. Everybody okay for the question? All in favor, signify by no. We need a motion. We need a motion. Moved by Councillor Sred, seconded by Councillor Fort. Okay, and the motion is to move that the classification of accounting clerk full time be approved by Council, replacing the current part time position of administrative assistant. Okay, so if we're all okay, all in favor of seeing the probably saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. The next one, bylaw 30 which is the uh, Tuscot Wastewater Amendment. We had the first reading uh, a couple meetings ago, and the second reading means we can approve it, correct? Okay. And I looked over it, and I just saw one change. That's the only change, and it, it was uh, um, part six, page 10, number three, and it's just an additional wording, shall limit access to and that's all the, the only difference. The, the policy stays the exact, or the bylaw stays exactly the same except those. So is there any discussion? If not, we need a motion. Um, Moved by Deputy Warden, seconded by Councillor Sonia. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Can't remind it. The next one is a first reading, and it's bylaw 35. the repeal, repeal bylaw, and this is the first reading. Are there any questions on the uh, bylaw? There's an attachment. <coughs> and I think again, that's only one that's only one uh, addition to the to the bylaw. We already have that, and it would be council procedure would be added to that to that uh, to that bylaw. Okay, I have Chantel. Sorry, I wasn't looking nope, at okay. the. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Um, so all I wanted to say was this is in addition to my ca- presentation that I would have given back in October, October, I think, maybe September. Anyways, that presentation about the changing of the council meetings. So what I want to say is I did hear what council had said that they want two decision meetings. So that will be taken into consideration when we make a policy in replacing with this bylaw. So this is basically the first step. We have to repeal the bylaw first. I will, we will create a policy for your review that will include two different meetings that will both be decision-based. They will both be live streamed. Um, one will not be held in the afternoon. As we heard, that doesn't quite work. Mm-hmm. Early evening is still a possibility. And Thursdays are still on the table for us as well, since we didn't hear any opposition on that either. Um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But that's basically what this is. This is our... Um, repeal okay. bylaw so basically it just requires us to add council procedure to it and that will be the first step and then i will start the policy councillor shred so move to uh okay so this reading whatever for the yes process. moved and seconded and for the that's the first reading and then we'll have we'll this will be brought up again uh any discussion when i since we've done that, I've spoken to a couple of uh, um, wardens and mayor, and they recommended they they really like the committee of the whole. <laughs> but that's not what we decided here. No, they they had they had their own reasons why they felt that that, and their, one of the reasons was that it it rather than have two. Full full meetings. You have one that's basically all the discussion is made, and then the next one is a can be a half hour to an hour meeting because you've already discussed everything, and chances are. And I brought the, I brought up the question about okay, so let's say there's a contract that needs to be passed. 
and you discuss it there. <coughs> what they do is after the meeting, they call a special meeting after the meeting to say, we need to deal with this. And it, it's already been discussed and the, and the special meeting, you have to, you have to do, you're supposed to do the uh, 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 motions in a regular meeting, okay? And what that what they do is they do that, but it's already been discussed in the committee of the whole, and it's just a matter of going there and saying they know if it's going to approve or because they've already done. But I guess at this point that was in our motion, and our motion was to go with two meetings. So what I just said was redundant. <laughs> 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 so, we're our own people. Okay, so all in favor, signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, carried. <laughs> but, but, but you know what? That comes back to what we said about when you, when you do that and you make recommendations, you can come back and it gives, and that's one of the things that was said. That it gives you a chance to 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 come to to think about it because you haven't made a motion yet, and you might you might if someone was watching, they might say something and it makes you think, right? Oh, was that a good idea or not? And then you can discuss it. Anyway, again, that's redundant. That's redundant as well. Okay, so the next one. Where am I here? It was, okay, letter of support, La Societe Touristique Bonton. This is, uh, uh, they're asking for letter of support. They are applying to ACOA for funding to set up a strategic plan. And what they would like is, they would like uh, a letter of support from our councils, you know, to, to, to say that that's a, uh, that's moved, seconded by Councillor Dickton. No discussion. All in favor? In favor, saying aye. aye. Contrary minded. Carried. I'm going to, before we go to the next one, I have, and I said when we began that I had three. And what it is, is I have, there's three organizations that have called me that they're applying for the New Horizons for Seniors grant. And on the application, it asks for uh, two letters of support. We've done that before to some organizations, and I have three that called me that are applying. The deadline for these applications is, is November 1st. Um, so I have the uh, um, Pumnico Legion are applying. Um, the Abrams River Schoolhouse Society is applying, and Village Friends are applying. And I guess what I would like is for, for council to, to uh, uh, give permission or whatever that we can, we can do those letters of support. It, it, helps, it helps for them to, uh, to get funding, for sure, if they know that communities are supporting. And I have Councillor Dickton. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we uh, provide three letters of support to the named three. organizations that you okay. named and that they help them out with their... Councillor Surrett? I guess uh, I have no problem with that. We, I need, just... we, need, we need a seconder oh, before we discuss. I'll second that. Okay. Now you can discuss. Okay, right. Uh, the only thing that I, I wish we could have would be, you know, instead of stating we had the letters, in, 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 isn't that the way, like this Roger Dartmoor yes. was this? That, that, that to me would be the preferable way. I mean, I have no problem. I know you're, you're not lying to us by, by any means, no. but it would be some nice to have that on a piece of paper on our agenda okay. instead of somebody just coming and saying it. But again, I have no problem. I got a call just about 10 minutes before I left home to come to this meeting. The, for the three? <laughs> to, no, oh. two of them I knew. Okay. Two of them I knew before. Just yeah. I wanted they to just see. asked me yeah. if they could get it, yeah. and I knew that we had done that before. Yeah. yeah. No problem. No. So, Thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And the only thing I would say, um, as the person making the motion, 
I fully uh, respect what the uh, seconder has said there. And I honestly feel as though it just gives a good paper trail and it leaves any questions in six months time or eight months time or whatever off the, you know, well, why did you support them? You didn't support us. And, well, you didn't send us a letter or I, I didn't talk with you. And you don't know, if you, at least if the, if the letter's brought up here at mm -hmm. council, we have something to fall back on. That's okay. all. So if there's no other discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Service exchange survey. Now, this is this has already been done. This is just more for, for or are you asking for a, a motion on this one? What's, that's CAO, and your mic is on. Uh, this is version two of the consultation survey. So as you recall, we started yes. going through these questions, and the questions were designed for council to answer. And at some point, council looked at me and said, what are we doing here? Like, can you can you help us out here? Like, this is these these questions are actually very operational, which they were. So I en I ended up doing that on your behalf, and you read it and you approved it, you made some changes, whatever. This is version two. This is even more operational than the first one. Okay. Um, these questions are very very designed, in my mind, to planning, development, etc. Things that you would, and respectfully so not be intimately familiar with. These are these are things that people can be working for the municipality for five, seven years and not be intimate, in, intimately familiar with them. So I say it that it's really an operational question being asked of a governor, um, you know, which I find rather unusual, but I digress. What I've done, I just want to let you know, I'm not going to go question by question on this. You guys will probably breathe a sighing relief of sorts, but there, <clears throat> most of them are yes, no, yes, no. And most of them are basically like, are you opposed to this? Are you opposed to that? Uh, these questions were reviewed by um, Kyle and John, uh, especially John. John took a long time to go through them and we met and we went through question by question. So these answers are influenced by some of our more senior people in this area. Um, so I'm, again, I'm not going to go question by question, but what you will find, the nature of these questions are, you know, you have to, you know, give public notice. Are you okay with that? Is, is 14 days good enough? Is all these things good enough? Things that many things that you wouldn't even have seen in, in your uh, illustrious elected career. So that's me saying, um, we've got the answers for you. If you're comfortable with them, um, we can, I can leave these with you. You can do nothing until the next meeting and then approve them then. You can approve them now. If you do, I will submit the survey on your behalf. Uh, or you can debate or ask questions about any of these. But I'm, I'm not going to go question by question because, you know, it's, it's too onerous. So, is there any questions, any comments or? I'll make a motion that we move this, the answers to the survey. It's moved, seconded by Councillor Boudreaux. Any, any discussion? Question. Question called. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Uh, next one is fall grants to organizations, attachment one page, and this would be Okay, so I guess it's a lot. <laughs> so uh, I'm just here to set the stage. Uh, this is Chantal's uh, work. Um, so I, ju I just... Excuse me. Bless you. Yes. Um, I did not it's flap okay. uncontrolled. He's only going to speak for a little while. Yeah, I see. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm allergic to long-winded people. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there something you want to share with us here today? Um, <laughs> that was after I went through the survey in record time. I know. I, know, I understand that. Thank, thank you, Deputy Warden, for your allergy and your input. So, just so that so the fall grants to organizations is is kind of messed up in a way because we're very used to doing the spring. You're very used to doing the spring, and this is kind of like the tail end of that. So sometimes you get a lot of requests 
uh, at this time for not enough money and you've got to figure it all out. It's frustrating for you. And then we don't get information from you, so it's frustrating to us. And everybody's frustrated and nobody gets paid and everybody's unhappy. So this is this is Fall Grants 101. So this is how it, this is how it's supposed to work. So I guess... <laughs> so this, this is this is why I lead because I say inappropriate things and then somebody fixes me later. So, so my point is this: is that there are certain applications here that we did not want to necessarily tell you it's a no, but we wanted to tell you now it's a no. Uh, so we wanted you to see that they applied, um, and, but that but that there are certain uh, applications here that you that you may want to consider doing differently. Okay, so number one is the community hall request for Hubbard's Point. I think mm -hmm. you all know that there's a community hall grants. They just they didn't know they applied for this one. We should simply defer that one into the budget for the community yes. halls, unless you want to make a motion to to increase your budget this year. Then we could entertain it at that time. But really, it does not belong in the fall grants organizations request. Does that make sense? Uh, and sense. I don't I don't want to poo poo the application and. And so, so the, it will be considered. Um, it's just the question is when uh, and how. How it's not here. When is up to you. So if you want to bring it to a future meeting and say, look, we want to do this before the end of the year so that it's one less application for next year, that is your call as council. Okay. Or what is usually done is thank you for your application. We will consider it when that opens so that it doesn't uh, affect your finances because you budget for it appropriately. One of two options, I leave that with you. We don't have to debate it now because it's a hard no on the topic, which is mm -hmm. the fall application. It's a hard no. Uh, anybody that applied for funding that received funding before, we said is non-eligible. Uh, the first one in red there, you see not eligible. They got like a five-year funding and then they applied for more. It was like, okay, uh, <laughs> it's up to you, but we have to deny it because, because of the reason. So it leaves... a a fairly uh, unusual uh, request that's different than the others. And I just wanted to take a minute to explain why I would think it was different. It's entirely up to you as council whether you agree, okay? So it's the application for the Kingsley Estates for Lot Owners Association. This application is to improve an existing uh, garbage location. Um, to service the residents of that area. As you know, we are in the business of doing that. So we have a contract that collects waste and we have bylaws and all these things and that support that. So the other applications are really about their purposes that are that we support, but they're not technically directly related to municipal services. This one is. Now, and I'm not, I'm not making pitching for this application. I'm merely saying it's different. So the, the, con the consideration here is that we have other public, um, non-public roads, so Kings Lake would not be the only one, that uh, desire garbage pickup in, at their location. So how is this one different than uh, Montague Road or, or, the, mm -hmm. uh, or the Beeling Lane? How is it different, right? It's different because there's an association that has been created that collects money that we collect money for and pay for services on their behalf. So the only difference between those roads and this one is how that road is owned and how it operates. So we have a bylaw in place now that is about maintenance of roads and you have to be an association and you have to do everything, well, most everything that this Kings Lake Association did. Okay, so we do only have the one. That doesn't mean we won't have others later. Right, so we when we think about this, we have to think about the um, the impact on direct municipal services. So this, as you know, is an application to build a safer area that uh, John Duffus can go in and pick up the garbage. It would still be on the Armstrong Road. It would still be on a public road. Our bylaw does not allow it to be anywhere else. It has to be on a public road. It would still be accessed on that road. It would be moving it from one side to another to effectively increase the safety associated with that. They are asking for some funding assistance in order for the municipality to invest in this. The reason why I think it's different is because 
these are the types of things that you might want to control by policy rather than a typical grants to orcs. Um, I asked them to put in the application for grants to orcs because there was nothing else. So I asked them to do this. So I don't want to make a hypocrite of myself. I did ask for this. Uh, however, it is up to council whether it wants to consider it within this funding model or another one. Um, and if you did want to take it out of the mix and deal with the rest, that's up to you. And then we could deal with that one separately but then if we did that we'd have to create policy to maybe cap our investment if we were interested in helping communities do this so um, we cannot help today we cannot help people on bailing lane to create a collection of green bin boxes or something of the that nature because we can only support a nonprofit organization all those residents would be profit oriented, they would not be nonprofit. So we're not able to actually accommodate that request today. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't create an association tomorrow. Um, and, and, and other Montague and other roads that we have in the community that we would have to consider. So whatever happened here, understand it could happen in other roads. And so that's why we want to be mindful of what, what we decide to do. And, and I think, you know, I am, keeping it long for you, uh, or Deputy Warden, is, is that, um, is, is that um, if, you're, if your desire is to take it out of the mix of fall, I think that's your first decision. And then you can choose how you're going to deal with it, not today, but in the future. You can do that. But I think the real question here today is, because it's fall, grants to orgs, does it belong here or not? And that's your choice. Right. Right. That's up to you. Um, the, and I can talk about advantages and disadvantages. I think you know them. Yeah. Like the more you have in here, the less you're able to dole out to the others, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so I'll leave it at that. And and I know that Chantal has uh, additional information to share around averages, et cetera. But I just I want to raise that issue before we get into the details. You first. No, we deal with, we deal with that it with that one. Okay. Okay. We have right. a couple here that have questions, and that's council board. Okay, so um, I, I just wanted this to be clear in my head. So this Kingsley Estate Law Owners, they, they, they're, they're an organization, nonprofit organization. And they're, okay, so for their regard, this is for their garbage pickup. So are they buying bins or something that they're going to put at a specific area and that they can bring their garbage and then, then the garbage collection can pick them up on the Armstrong Road, right? Correct. Okay, I just wanted to make clear that's what it was. So other private roads, I'll mention Montague Road, could do the same thing. They could create an association and do a similar thing. Yes, in fact, I believe that this issue came up years ago with the owner of the Montague Road that became less interested in maintaining the road. Um, we now have an avenue where the road could transfer in ownership to the association. And what would happen was every person on that road would pay a fee. So let's say it costs $15,000 to maintain the road a year. Uh, each person would pay an equal amount based on their residence or however they decided. And then their property, would, their road would be maintained. What we would do is we would give them the accounting. So we would, you know, uh, if they wanted to hire, you know, um, I don't know, somebody, Gordon Amiro, to do mm -hmm. the plowing, for instance, bad example. But... Uh, uh, they would they would flow through us. We would collect it, and we would pay that individual. This is different. This request is different. It's not about actually maintaining the road. It's specifically to create a safe environment for garbage pickup on the Armstrong Road. So not on a private. It's on a public road, uh, but it would maintain a safe uh, way for both the resident and the hauler to move in and out without causing too much accident. So Montague Road could do a similar thing. If they created the association, they could absolutely, if that was their intention. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Dodgemall. Uh, and again, I guess that's the, the line of questioning that, or questions that I have. Uh, so uh, the, the money we are collecting on their behalf is used for snow re removal of the road, or what is it? Is yes. That, is that the sole thing? or No. It would be uh, any grading, uh, it would be snow removal, it would not be capital construction in any way. So it would be any maintenance that the association deemed to be appropriate. So if it was if it was grading, if it was snow plow, whatever it was, but they determine the budget. 
And so what they do is right. they say, it's going to cost us 16 to do X, Y, Z. That's what our intentions are. And we say, okay, thank you very much. And we look at you know 60 owners and we divide it by that number right. and we charge them a fee. So I, I guess my next question was, well, could, uh, could this project or, you know, I, I guess uh, waste be added, but then again, they're already paying taxes to, for their waste to be picked up. So they are, I mean, yeah. everybody that lives on a private road is paying for both the collection and the diversion of garbage. Yeah. So yeah. in some instances they can't collect it right at the door, Yeah. but every garbage is collected. So, uh, on bailing, for instance, they got to roll that green bin, uh, half a kilometer down the street in order for the, uh, the hauler to pick it up. Um, in my instance, I have to haul it 300 meters the same because I got a long driveway. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that that it doesn't mean that we didn't that it's not that the service isn't available for them. It's just not in the same way. Um, but the diversion is the same. Yeah. So it's not just the collection. Yeah. It's, it's also the landfill. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. What do we need here? We don't need a motion. What do we need at this point on this? I would require council to agree to either not consider it here or to consider it here. That's it. That would be it. Because we're talking about, we don't need to make, if we're not going to consider it here in the fall, we don't have to make a decision on the amount today. No. We just exactly. need to get it off the list. That's right. And then we can deal with the rest of them on the list and then make a motion and move on. If we think it should be here, then it has to be considered today yes. or when you're but, ready to be. But even if it's here... Their, their amount of ask is, is even over and above what we have as a budget. I, I always have a problem when I see these large asks and trying to average out when you've got 7,000 and you've got one that, that's this amount and we've got two that are very, very high. And, and I find it very difficult to, to say, well, they want, they want, Eight thousand dollars. We're going to give them seven hundred dollars. It's almost an insult, right? And and I think you know. I mean, every little everything helps, but you know that there, it's not even going to come close to what they want to do, and which is why we changed the 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 the, the hall grants because for that for that exact same reason because they they had big projects and all we could give them was was a, a tiny amount. But anyway. And I don't know if this is, I'm going to say it here as well. I think we should, when we advertise the fall grants, we should say what we have in our budget. It might discourage a lot of people from putting, you know, 5,000 if they know you've only got seven to, to, for, to, to, to put it, in, you know, to give everybody. So anyway, just wanted to bring that out. And I have Councilor Surratt. Uh, I find it a little disheartening to, to see that all of a sudden, you know, we've had people dragging their garbage to the road for years and years and years, and all of a sudden uh, we have, an, if you make an association and they can apply for this, I find it disheartening that maybe, maybe it's my negligence that I didn't know about this, that the residents on the Beeling Road, I've heard them, you know, a lot of times complain about, you know, they can't get service and they're paying taxes. And all of a sudden we have these people coming here, which I don't blame them for coming if they were told, but you know, maybe there was a policy there. Maybe it's in my negligence that I didn't know, but you know, it's too bad that uh, we couldn't have addressed this to these, you know, th these roads uh, before. Having said that, how many roads does, does the municipality, how many roads does the municipality have? I know there's Beeling, there's Montague. How many other roads like that are there? Municipality, would you want to know a number or that would be kind of asking too much? <laughs> uh, well, um, I can get you that information. I know yeah. that there's there's more than those roads. Okay. And what, what we're talking yeah. about is is private roads. Yes. So it yeah. could be that it's a long driveway that suddenly had, that was just a driveway before, that suddenly had three civic numbers added to it, then became a private road. Yeah. Um, I would say that those that live on Bailing or those that live on Chemin des Boulots yeah. um, both obtain a service. Yeah. Uh, they're both getting the same service. If the ambulance has to, sorry, if the RCMP has to go, um, if the fire department has to go, they're all able to access those roads. The um, I think in this instance, they're not asking, 
they will continue to transport their garbage. So uh, the, the, the request is to move their garbage from their home to a central location that they will have to drive to that location. So it's not, it's not suddenly that we're picking them up at their front lawn. That's not what we're doing. What, we're, what the request is is to help them because they're, they're willing, they have to pay, they know they have to pay a certain amount, is to help them create this environment under the auspices of safety so that there's still the responsibility of the resident to bring the garbage to that location. We cannot go up that road and we yeah. won't go up that road. It's, and that's the, that rule is the same as bailing in any other road. However, those roads certainly have the option if they want to create an association um, that, they could, that they could somehow band together and do things yeah. differently. I will say that that's a very recent decision of council that happened probably a year and a half ago maybe. Um, and so, so much of the development of that work would have happened uh, probably last winter. So, uh, I'll say I'll say one thing: what you just said there, I never I never thought of it. D Beeling still have to bring their garbage to the main to the road. I never thought of that. You're right; it doesn't. I was somehow thinking it's a benefit. No, Th these people on King's Lake have to bring it there. Thank you for pointing that out. So I guess what we're looking for is, is a motion to to either uh, deal with it under fall grants or just not deal with it under fall grants and and then we can we can look at it under a different uh, a different system or a different uh, uh, budget item or whatever it, it's correct and it's hard for us to give you any sort of advice when you're looking at seven other applications for that's funding right because right? we have to give that's you right. the whole thing exactly if you want to deal with it as one we can do that but that's up to you as council no, I, okay i have deputy warden thank you warden i just feel that uh as you said a nine thousand dollar request and we're going to we're looking at giving a thousand eleven hundred i feel like probably our best decision would be to move it off and and consider it in another way because this really is just a drop um, for what they're asking for. And I'm not saying that we won't consider it, but looking at other options to consider it rather than here. Exactly. So that's, that's a motion? That's a motion. Okay. There's a motion. Move, uh, seconded by Councillor Sonia. I have Councillor Donchamal. Uh, thank you, Ward. And uh, I'm just looking at, at this uh, for the fall grants and then thinking about, uh, about the, the spring grants. And <coughs> of course, the spring grants is uh, a bigger amount, but way more applications, right? So, yes. uh, you know, chances are that ask, uh, you know, the, the results would probably not be much different right. in, the, in, the, in the spring, as far as I'm concerned, because exactly. of so many asks for the amount, right? So, I mean, it's... it's to me, it's either now or, or in the or in the or in the spring. Uh, you know, pick your poison. So, so we have a motion, and that would be to remove it from this fall grant to deal with it. To deal with it under a different uh, system, is that correct? Right, and and I I don't think the intent would be to just push it to the, to the no. spring, to Councillor no. Dontremel's point, but no. it would be to consider it on its own because yes. it's almost a policy change for you. Right. So it could actually, you, you would have to consider this under on whether or not you want to get in this kind of business, and you may not, and, and that's okay. But to add it to fall and just give an amount, you're not actually dealing with the foundation of the issue. Exactly. <clears throat> so are you all clear on what the motion is? Are we ready for the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, carried. Now we go to our executive assistant. And you're on. Okay. So <clears throat> what I did is you have a spreadsheet in front of you. Um, and I prepared the averages of the um, of the averages that I received. I did not receive all of them, so I took the averages based on what I did receive. And I averaged them out, and we still came out to eight thousand thirty dollars. So that's still over our ask, of course. Yes. So what I did is I went in and put a suggested amount. So I suggested um, you can see what I suggested there. However, now that you just chose to take out Kings Lake, we now have eleven $1 hundred more dollars to give. <laughs> so okay. that is another part of the question that I now have for you: is 
where do we now put that 1100? I have a couple of options that I can put forward to consider. I can divide the 1100 between either all the applications or I can divide them between the ones that are left in the Argyle region. Yeah, it's entirely a decision of council. No. Um, no, doesn't have the but that's basically what I have. If you want to go with my suggested amounts, then we can go with a motion on that. And then you can have, you can make a motion. How would we do that? Should they make a motion for me to divide the 1100, however they feel best fits, I think? I think so. So whatever and you guys think. There I was another huge one I'm looking for it here. It would have been the Southwest Nova Pride Association yes. that you're looking for. They were requesting $9,600. Yes, exactly. Yes. So. So in, when I looked at the averages, if I may explain, it, when I looked at your averages, they were above, as I said. Yeah. So I had to go and make some changes. So I did go and with what we've done in previous times, and I put the same amount for all areas out for all organizations outside of Argyle. Yes. Um, again, I can do what you want if we want if we need more time for this. It's so whatever you guys the, choose. Uh, okay. So you 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 see what the uh, recommendations are, suggested amounts from from staff, and what you're saying is you would. Because your seven thousand now includes the eleven hundred, so you would take that eleven hundred and and kind of divide it. However, sure, however, yes. yeah. it fits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of them, some of them we've 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 given. I mean, there were some that that were already set, like uh, pre-approved. Yep, like whatever. the six hundred. Don't stay, stay at yeah. what they are. So, are we good and are we ready for a motion to let uh, 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 Chantal go ahead with the? Uh, Go ahead. D1100, would that all be divided in Argyle? It de it's up to you guys. That's, if you make a motion that, based on that, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that's what I'd like. I'd if like you want to do that, that's totally yeah. fine. Okay. Okay, right. so it's moved and seconded that we go and we give uh, Chantal to, to uh, uh, take the, the total of 1100 and divide it among the Argyle uh, applications. Are we ready for the question? Question call for all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, carried. Correspondence, we have the uh, NSFM Monday, <coughs> Monday memo. Uh, anything, you've all seen that, it's there. Financial request, we have one for $500 from Laura Hills Cemetery, that's Councillor Bork. I'd like to move that we give $500 to the Laura Hills Cemetery. Second. Moved and seconded, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary minded, carried. Agenda topics for next meeting, notice of motion. Anybody have anything? And no questions for question period. I see a, a nod or a, and I have Councillor Surratt. <laughs> As usual, uh, I guess question period. Uh, I had a question for the CAO. I, I should have probably put this on the agenda. And the CAO uh, question was, uh, did, did the, the, uh, at the AMA, uh, I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm going in camera or not. Uh, did you meet with David Morgan for the airport? Um, that meeting, I was not in attendance to the AMA meeting, oh, um, but sorry. that meeting did not occur. I did not occur. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just want to know. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I guess the next thing is in camera, and we need a motion to go in camera. Motion to go in camera. Second. Moved and seconded. Then I guess all in favor. Aye. We are now in camera. And...